Okay, so what we're going to do now is build the iRig. Now this is going to get a bit technical. So what I want you to do first is first make sure that you turn off the bone shapes because bone shapes are simply just going to get in your way when you're developing your modules. We can always turn this back on a little later. Okay, so the next thing that I want you to do is make sure that this layer is on. This is where the neck.touch and the head.touch bones are on and the non-deform layer is on. Now press the shift key down and turn on the deform bone layer. Okay, now go ahead and click on this eye and just zoom in. Now here is better to press the 7 key to work with the eye bones from the top view. Okay. So now what we're going to do is first switch to edit mode and click on this bone and make sure that the X axis mirror feature is on. Now do shift D to duplicate and then right click to cancel. Press the control key down, click on this red arrow and move it to the right. Okay, that's the first step. Now the next step here is that we want to make sure that the deform is off on this bone and click on this one, the deform is off on this bone. Let's go ahead and click this and we're going to call this m.i.flex.c.l. Now we have to use that special dot L and dot R for these two bones. Okay, so go ahead and hover your mouse, do control C, now click on this one, click inside, do control V, and just make this dot R and enter. Now go ahead and click on the tail of this bone and just press the R key to make sure that this bone rotates, right? So just press the R key and right click to cancel. So this bone is now set up, so we're going to click on this bone and now press the M key and put it on the non-deformed layer. And it's a good idea to click on the mirrored bone and press the M key. You can see that it did in fact go to the uh, same layer. Okay, so that's all set up. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and click on this bone, press the shift key down and click on this one. Now here I want to show you that you can actually select these bones in edit mode, then switch to pose mode, do shift control C and now do copy transforms. So right now the original bone is just going to snap to this bone is because that bone where it has a parent-child relationship with the head bone is not using the connected feature. So when bones are not using the connected feature and when you do copy location or do copy transforms, they'll just move to the bone that they're copying the transforms from. So that's why that bone moved over there. But if you switch to edit mode, you'll see that that bone comes back, okay? So here we can do the same thing. We can click on this bone first, press the shift key down, click on this one, go ahead and switch to pose mode, do shift control C, and here we can do copy transforms. We also could have done this in pose mode. I just want you to see that you can do this in edit mode. Now go ahead and switch to edit mode, click on this bone, press the control key down and move it back here, okay? Now we can go ahead and switch to pose mode, and over here make sure that only the non-deform layer is on. Now go ahead and press the 3 key. Now over here I'm just going to rotate kind of like this to show you that when you have this selected and press the R key two times we are actually uh, rotating the eye. Now the eye might be difficult to see that is it even rotating so a good thing to do is simply just go to the figure and press the tab key to go into edit mode, go ahead and zoom in and press the alt key down and just select an edge like this, do shift D to duplicate, right click to cancel and here we're just going to click on this green arrow and just bring it out. We can delete this duplicated edge later. Now here we can simply just go back to the armature. Right, so now when you press the R key two times you can see that the eye is definitely moving. You can also just press the one key to look at this from the front view. So this is a quick way of doing this, okay? So now what I want you to do is go ahead and now do file and here we're going to do save as and let's save this as a rigging lesson 3e.blend. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is create touch bounds to drive these mechanical eye bounds. So to do this, go ahead and press the 7 key to go to your top view and press the tab key to go into edit mode. Now first we need to create a special bound. This is going to be a stretch bound that is going to be used with bone shapes to simply draw a line to wherever the center touch bone is going. So what I want you to do is make sure that you turn off the X axis mirror, do Shift D to duplicate this and just park it over here. This is the only purpose this bone is going to play. It's just going to be a stretch bone. It's just a visual thing. So we're going to place this bone directly in the center. So to do this, go ahead and click on the head of this bone, press the Shift key down, click on the head of this bone. Notice where the 3D manipulator is ending up do shift s and do cursor to select it now click on the body of this bone do shift s and do selection to cursor now go ahead and click on this bone go to the bone tab and just make sure that the deform is off now when you duplicate a bone where the deform is off the duplicated bone also is going to have the deform up now it's a good idea to always check this because it's very easy to miss this now here we're going to click inside and type in m dot i dot line and enter now here because this is a center bound we do not have to use a dot l or dot r okay now what we want to do over here is basically duplicate all three bounds okay now there are two ways to do this one is that you can simply click on all these three bounds and do shift to do duplicate them or you can simply click on the X axis near feature now here you can see that we have all three bones selected we don't have to we can actually click on this one press the shift key on click on this one and this one because it has the dot R will automatically duplicate but if you had this bone selected with the X axis mirror it wouldn't make a difference go ahead and zoom out do shift D to duplicate right click to cancel and here for now just click on this green arrow and move these bones kind of like over here now later we're going to actually move these bones a bit further right now we're going to keep them like this is because we're working with such tiny bones we don't want to be zooming in and out to try to figure out how this thing is going to be set up it just makes it a bit easier anyways go ahead and click on each of these bones and make sure that the deform is off which it should be now go ahead and click this and this is going to be a touch bone so we're going to not use the M prefix we're just going to type in I dot touch dot L enter now hover your mouse over here do control C click on this one click inside do control V and change this to dot R now anytime you do this you want to make sure that the X axis mirror feature is on click on the head of this bone and just press the R key to make sure that this bone is also rotating that's it now let's go ahead and click on this bone and this is going to be our center touch bone so we're going to call this I dot center dot touch and enter now here what we're going to do is click on this bone press the shift key down click on this one and do control P and create a parent child relationship make sure you do keep offset okay now I'm going to explain this to you as to why we did this okay now before we do that what I want you to do is click on the tail of this bone and press the 3 key to go to the right view we're going to zoom in we're going to press the R key and press the control key down and rotate this by 90 click on the tail of this bone and just make it a bit larger okay now the reasoning behind this is that it just makes it easier to rotate the parent and the children will follow. If we didn't rotate this bone, we would have to rotate this bone on the Y axis. Okay. Now to see this, what you want to do is first switch to pose mode. And here you will notice that we have to now think about these locks over here. So we want the user to be able to definitely change the location and of course change the rotation now on these bones we don't want the user to 
change the rotation there's really no need to right so we can lock these but definitely we have to unlock the location click on this unlock the location and now do the rotation okay now you'll notice that because this is the parent and when we press the R key two times we can rotate this module over here okay now why did we do this so here you can see that what we're going to do is simply tell this mechanical bound to track wherever this bound is going okay now notice this when we press the 3 key notice that if you drew a horizontal line from the head of this bound to the tail you will see that they're perfectly aligned this is what you want okay now do the middle mouse button to rotate kind of like this over here so you're going to click on this bone first press the shift key down click on this one do shift control c in here we're going to use damped track go ahead and click it do the same thing for this bone click on this one press the shift key down click on this one do shift control c and do damped track so let's go ahead and click on this bone go to the constraints and take a look at what's going on over here so basically the way damp track works and this is something you always want to use over here if you're planning on tracking is that here we're simply saying that we want this bone to track wherever this bone is going and we want to do it along the Y axis this is why we have this enabled by default so if you click over here and press the G key you will notice that the eye will move right so go ahead and click on this bone and press the one key to go to the front view now you'll see that when we move the center press the G key both eyes are simply just going to rotate okay now let's say we park this over here we can now click on these individual touch bones and move the eyes individually that's the idea here so here you can just press the A key to Alt R and G to reset the rotation and location now here what we're going to do is actually set this bone up but we're going to use it later go ahead and click on this press the shift key down and click on this one do shift control C in here what you're going to do is choose a stretch 2 okay click on this bone the idea of stretch 2 is basically you can make this bone a stretch right and here you can see that the values being shown over here simply are showing that how far the head of this bone is away from the head of the bone is going to stretch to that's all that means okay so we're going to understand how to use this with bone shapes a bit later but here you will notice that when we click on this and press the G key that bone is going to start to stretch we're simply going to draw a line using bone shapes to this bone it's just a visual thing that's all this is so right click to cancel that but go ahead and just position this like this and here you're going to go under file and we're going to do save as and let's just save this as a rigging lesson 3f dot blend okay so what we're going to do now is make this i rig a bit more advanced first what we want to do is implement a feature that can be turned off or on to give us natural and unnatural eye movement so if you click on this bone and press the G key you can see that we can rotate this eye separately but if we click on this bone when we press the G key both eyes are going to rotate at the same time so this is a natural eye movement and this is unnatural eye movement okay so what we're going to do is basically click on this bone go to the bone tab and here under the custom properties click on add click on edit and here we're going to say align eyes click on ok now of course go ahead and scroll down into this panel right click and do copy data path now here we're going to click on this bone go to the constraints and implement the driver on this damp track so right click do add a driver and do manually create a later go ahead and open up the graph editor and go to drivers click over here open this up click on the drivers tab expand this over here we're going to do a single property click on armature do control V 
And over here, we're just going to type in VAR and enter. Now here, what I want you to do is right click this, do copy driver, then click on this bone, right click and do paste a driver. So here you can see that we can inject this value on two drivers at the same time. Okay. Well, what I want you to notice over here is that what we're trying to do is implement a feature that by default should give us the ability to rotate both eyes at the same time when we press the G key, right? So here what we're saying is that when this feature is set to 1, we do not want the ability to rotate these eyes separately, right? But when this is set to 0, then we do want the ability to rotate these eyes separately. So what this simply means is that this value is actually flipped. When it is at 0, we should get the ability to rotate these eyes separately. And when it is set to 1, we should not get the ability to rotate these eyes separately. That rotation will need to be implemented by additional bounds. So to fix this, what we can do is simply click on this bound and over here hover your mouse and press the period key. What you're going to see is this line. You can see that over here there's an orange dot and then there's another dot. If you right click over here you'll see that it becomes black. It's a little difficult to see and if you right click over here the other one is going to become black. Now over here this is showing that this is a value of a 0 to 1. So what we're going to do is flip this value. Basically just right click over here then go to the F curve. Now make sure that this is set on linear. Okay. Now over here you'll see that here is a value of a 0 for this dot over here. So we're just going to type in 1 and enter. Now right click over here on this dot. Over here in the values you're going to type in a 0. Okay. So this just makes it go backwards. So when it is at a value of 1, this driver is not going to work. But when it is at a value of 0, then this driver will work. So go ahead and right click to copy driver. Click on this bone, right click and just do paste driver. That's it. So now when you press the G key, you can see that both eyes are not going to move. This is because here we set the value to 1. But if we turn this off, meaning that we don't want to align the eyes, now we can click on this and uh, rotate these eyes individually. Of course you can click this and press the G key and both of them will work. So we're going to understand how this works in the next lesson when we implement additional bones to make sure that when this is set to 1, both eyes are going to rotate at the same time. So go ahead and close this up. Go under File, do Save As, and you're just going to save this as Rigging Lesson 03G.blend. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.